when we're thinking about legitimate facts, figures, not just rhetoric, action-based solutions, conservatism is what saved me. Your message yeah. is, is very, very timely, especially in this election year. President Trump is now uh, polling with percentages of 20% mm -hmm. and above in the African-American community. Some people say he might get 30 or 40% of the African-American vote. If he does, game over, he wins the election. Approval ratings at 30% and continue to go up, and we know why. Why? It's because is this that? is a president that has provided solutions to the ills in which a lot of policies. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So let's be specific. So they like the word solutions. <laughs> but, and, you know, and that's an important point, solutions. Yeah. Let's be specific. Yeah. What has he done for black America that other politicians promised but never delivered? Well, we can talk about the lowest unemployment rate among African Americans on record. We can talk about the First Step Act, which is thousands of people. I love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and that was very powerful. It was bipartisan. <laughs> it was an important uh, reform yeah. in the criminal justice system. And it wasn't necessarily race specific, but truly, I think all of us have to admit, and, and I was a governor long enough to look at sentencing and realize right. people in the African-American community were getting sentenced disproportionately to other people in the culture. I mean, it was just a reality. Well, let's be very clear about where these policies came from. Joe Biden was the architect of the 94 crime bill. We're talking about thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in jail. And um, as you've previously mentioned, a lot for infractions like a, a dime bag of marijuana. Um, there's been a lot of individuals who had the draconian policies of the 94 crime bill or the 86 crack laws, again, pushed by Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, which have harmed the black community. So when we think about what policy solutions in which President Trump has offered, the First Step Act is a critical one because we're talking about thousands of people released from jail, 90% of them being African-American. We're talking about permanent funding for historically black colleges and universities. There's been a lot of policies that no politician, whether they be a Democrat or Republican, in my lifetime that have been passed and implemented by this president um, and has benefited the African-American community. And that's why I talk about that and taken for granted. General, I wanna be very clear. The president's First Step Act was not a get out of jail free card. Of course it, it, not. This was for nonviolent offenders, often first time of offenders, course. who were going to prison for Alice long Johnson. sentences. A great example. Yes. Uh, basically would have been in prison for life. Yeah. But really, the, the punishment did not fit the crime. Correct. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you grew up in the south side of Chicago. Wasn't the easiest place probably to grow up in. It's, I'm sure, a lot harder now to live there than it ever has right. been. Uh, President Trump, four years ago, made a statement, and a lot of people thought it was a crass statement, but it turned out to be pretty What do you blunt. have to lose? That's what he said. That's right. Vote for me. What do you have to lose? You've been voting for these other guys for all this time. Did that take root with a lot of people in the community? I, I'll, I'll put that, flip that on his head and say, what do you have to gain? And I just mm -hmm. mentioned <laughs> what we've had yeah. to gain. And, it, gain. and this isn't something that's just been for African-Americans. Clearly, it's benefited um, those in manufacturing, those in the Appalachian region who really needed the help as well. Um, the opioid crisis, which is another issue, because me, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, extremely poor, lights, gas, and water off at the same time. I'm addicted to crack cocaine. So that's an issue hmm. that's very, very close to my heart. And I'm thankful that this isn't a president who simply talks about the issues or says how bad it is or use nice rhetoric like we've seen with Joe Biden. And, well, maybe I shouldn't say Bloomberg because it's not nice rhetoric, right? <laughs> so, so we hear what they really yeah. think. But this is someone who's providing solutions. And I think that moves the conversation forward. And I think it uplifts everyone. And I think that's the conversation we should be having as a country. The power of your story is that if you were just a raw statistic, you should still be living in the south side of Chicago, probably on drugs and living in poverty. How come you got out and other people haven't? My faith in God. And let mm. me be very clear about that. Mm. Thank mm. you. Be very clear. I'm so thankful. And you know what? I think one, and I talk about it in my book, Taken for Granted, there's an other overlooked part of faith, an act of faith. One in which I think people need to realize, especially young folks, because I know y'all got it. I've been here in Nashville for all of a day and people are praying for me in their Uber. So, like, and that's a serious story. Like that literally happened no today. Kidding. So y'all got it. But there's so many young folks in this country who don't understand that the, the power of God, the power of his favor, mm. unmerited favor, favor you don't deserve. Yeah. So 
It doesn't matter about the decisions you might have made that bit might have been negative. He still have open arms to bring you right in and, and treat you like it never happened before. So with that being the case, me growing up in the in the church and having a pastor by the name of Bill Winston, if you know who he is, who who taught. Yeah. Hey, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Who, who said you're not a victim? You're not your your past. No matter if you were born across the tracks or on the tracks, you will be successful. You will be victorious. Mm. And that's the kind of God that I serve. You know, when you talk about that in your book. Uh, the message is don't go around whining about the way things are. Yeah. And, and you were so blessed to have a pastor who rather than say, oh, it's not your fault. Right. It's your parents' fault. Right. It's your mother's fault. It's the neighborhood's fault. It's the government's fault. Correct. You had an influence in your life, in this case, a pastor, who, who did not allow you to wallow around in self-pity, right. but told you you had a shot. This was America. When you talk about that in Taken for Granted, this, to me, incredible book, and I Thank think you so much. it's so very powerful to say, it's not about Democrats and Republicans right. or even ideology. It's whether or not you have the, capa the capacity to believe you are an individual, you are not just a member of a group, and you're not waiting on your group to get better for you to get better. Right. I believe we all, each individual in this room, all these hundreds of people, we have in us this hidden ability. We just happen to call it potential. It's just going to take some work to pull it out. And every day there's, a, there's an effort that you mm -hmm. use to make yourself a better person. And with God's guidance, because I think that's key, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him, hmm. and He shall direct your path. Yeah. With that guidance, you shall move forward. So we, 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 we gonna, we gonna counsel fear, <laughs> no more fear. Second Timothy 1 and 7. There is a, a second part of the subtitle of the book that liberalism failed a lot Absolutely. of Americans. How did liberalism fail people and more specifically in the African-American community. So if we look at this, it look back to the 60s, the single mother rate was about 25%. Now is it about 80%? Whoa. Yeah, yeah. 80%? 80%, 80%. Clear facts, you can go Google it, research it. Um, when you think about a lot of the, the abortion statistic, millions of babies aborted. So we don't have the kind of population in which we could have and really be able to flex that power. And, and can we mention that yeah. more African-American babies are aborted? Than any other. Disproportionately, yeah, right. not just in number, but proportionately. Why isn't there an outcry for more of the African-American leaders about their community being aborted at a much higher rate than any other population? Well, I mean, why, why would the Democrats want to say anything when Planned Parenthood is giving them so much money and resources for their mm. campaigns? Like, that's a legitimate consideration. Yeah. You think about Margaret, Margaret Singer, who was the, 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 the founder of Planned Parenthood and where her, what her original goal was, and that was the elimination of black children. So when we're thinking about legitimate facts, figures, not just rhetoric, action-based solutions, conservatism, is what saved me. I mean, I lost a lot of friends. I talked about recently how I was at a Hollywood party and Tiffany Haddish, I went up to shake her hand and she says to me, I know who you are. You're that Republican from Fox News. And she refused to shake my hand. Wow. And you know, I'm a single guy. Follow me on Instagram, at Gianno Caldwell. <laughs> Slide in the DMs, we here. Uh, but <laughs> you, can, you can lose friends. But at the end of the day though, are you doing it for a greater purpose? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm doing this. And I'm thankful to be an individual who worked in politics since I was 14, found conservatism, and I found a better life.